because how can we love God whom we don't see? St. John says, how can you say that you love God whom you don't see if you do not love your neighbor whom you see? Jesus said, I was hungry and you gave me to eat. Hungry not only for bread, hungry for love, for the word of God, for the tender concern of somebody. Naked, I was naked and you clothed me, not only with a piece of cloth, Nakedness is that loss of that beautiful human dignity of the child of God. The dignity that have been created to love and to be loved. The dignity of that beautiful virtue, purity. That we keep our purity pure. That we keep our chastity chaste. That we keep our virginity virgin. This is a nakedness, and that is lost. I was homeless, and you took me in, not only for a house made of bricks, but I was homeless, unwanted, unloved, a throwaway of society. But today we have right here in our country we see the poor people. We see the young people with that disease, unwanted, unloved, a throwaway of society. Are we there to be that love, that kindness, that thoughtfulness to them and share with them the terrible pain, the terrible feeling of terrible loneliness being a throwaway, have no one to be somebody to somebody. This is the nativity of Jesus, being poor, being born as a poor. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our people. You could look at their faces, now you see that there is real peace. The first time when I came here, it was completely different. Mm. Completely different. Difficult to explain, but it was different. Mm. But now it is so beautiful. But does it surprise you? Here we are reaching the end of the 20th century and it seems your work is in greater demand than ever. Yes, it is. And all over. Now we are in 105 countries and we have 500 convents all around the world mm -hmm. without counting India. <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, and what is very beautiful that many people thank me for giving them opportunity to do works of love. It has helped so many people, they would have never had the chance to do anything for the poor. And now, through us, they are getting involved in the work so much. Work that Mother Teresa insists is not confined just to the third world. Worried about the homeless situation in Britain, she's seeking to increase the number of centers and soup kitchens where her sisters are feeding several hundred people every day. God has been so good to us, to give us the opportunity to serve Him, because Jesus said very clearly, whatever you do to the least of brethren, you did it to me. If you give a, a glass of water in my name, do it to me. If you receive a little child in my name, you receive me. And we have received thousands of children all over the place. Yeah, it's wonderful. We have given in adoption over 3,000 people. Two or three children went to England also. And one of them has grown big now and married. And the first thing she wrote to me, she said, Mother, please give me a, one little child. 
to, I want to do to the child what you did to me. <laughs> when your lifetime's work is finally over, will your organization carry on? Oh, yes. It is not I who are doing it. <laughs> uh, it's uh, God's work. And that is why we must uh, do everything possible not to spoil God's work, that it remains His. We do it like that and we are sure to do it well then. Because it is not how much we do, but how much love we put in the doing. That makes all the difference. And I'm very, very grateful to the English must to help peace, love and joy to bring into this country. The people appreciate it very much. I don't know if I'm, they are very much, very come very close to the English people. I don't know how, but so I'm thanking all of you for what you have all done for, for our people here.